This is Twit. All right, we are back from the break, and I am very excited for our next guest. It's Brian Westover of PC Mag. Welcome, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, pleasure to have you on the show. So I was uh, glad to have you join us to talk about some new hardware. Microsoft just announced some new Surface devices. Uh, I was hoping you could kind of start by walking us through the key hardware updates in these models. Sure. So there are two new Surface products. We're looking at a, a 13-inch Surface laptop and a 12-inch Surface Pro tablet. Uh, the big difference is there. I mean, some of these are superficial. Um, you get new colors. They now come in blue and violet and platinum. Uh, the big changes, though, is that these are both smaller and lighter than last year's models. Um, the laptop shaves off about four ounces. It's a 13-inch instead of a 13.8-inch screen. Um, the, uh, the Surface Pro tablet drops seven ounces. Um, and, and in a tablet, that's, that's a difference you're going to feel. Uh, the other major differences, um, they step up to Wi-Fi 7 for connectivity, USB-C entirely uh, for connecting peripherals. Uh, and the, uh, the systems both use uh, the Snapdragon Plus, the Snapdragon X Plus processors instead of the X Elite chips they used last year. Um, they're, they're a little cheaper. They're more energy efficient. They're not quite as performant as last year's chips. Uh, but in day-to-day -day use, they're going to feel very much the same, but with better but with better battery life. Understood. Now, both of these devices, as we uh, discussed, are powered by Qualcomm's Snapdragon X Plus chips and fall under that Copilot Plus PC category. It's been a while since we talked on the show, uh, since I've been able to you know, talk to the, the folks about what qualifies a PC as Copilot Plus. So I was hoping you could tell us, uh, remind us rather about that, and then what AI features you can count on in, these Surface, uh, in this Surface hardware. Right. So uh, Copilot Plus and Copilot Standard is Microsoft's branding for an AI PC experience. So an AI PC is any device that's made to run AI apps on device or support AI features in other apps. You know, like Adobe, you already have on your system, AI, the AI features will leverage some of that hardware. Um, so we're talking about NPU hardware, which is processing dedicated to neural networks and their unique processing needs. Um, and that supports features, I mean, in Copilot Plus in particular, that gives you the Copilot Assistant, which is your little chat assistant on the system, uh, but also features like live captions and live translation, uh, image generation, uh, and a bunch of chat-based features like, you know, summarizing text and changing format and tone. Um, those things that you might be used to from, from other assistants like ChatGPT, but run on the device. And then one of, uh, and you talk about this in your article, one of the more surprising choices, uh, Microsoft's continued reliance on Qualcomm chips instead of our dear friend Intel or AMD in its consumer surfaces. What uh, reason does the company give for the loyalty, it seems, to <laughs> Snapdragon? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of shook things up last year when they announced that Surface was all going to be Qualcomm for the consumer models, um, but they haven't said much publicly. Last year, I had a chance to ask them directly, and they said, you know, Qualcomm was just the company that hit the thresholds they needed first for like, you know, 40 tops out of the NPU, uh, the necessary hardware to support what they wanted to do with Copilot. That's not the case this year because Intel and AMD both have chips out that support Copilot Plus. We have we have those in the market already. Um, so this year, I suspect we're seeing, you know, that this is part of an ongoing agreement between the two. Um, they announced in 2023 a collaboration between Microsoft and Qualcomm to scale up AI capabilities and, quote, bring best-in-class AI experiences. Um, so the move to ARM and a partnership with Qualcomm is likely a multi-year endeavor to do just that because it requires not just hardware, but also a broader ecosystem. Developers mm -hmm. need to work on this. Features need to be introduced. That takes time. The ecosystem has to take root and grow. And you know, Microsoft is likely investing in Qualcomm's roadmap and vice versa, so that this, this pays off down the road with that sort of ecosystem growth. Um, that's not something you get with a one-off change of hardware for one year. 
that's something that happens over a few years. Understood. Um, the Surface Laptop and the Surface uh, Pro, physically smaller than their predecessors. Um, does Microsoft kind of talk about the shift in this form factor? And uh, are we looking at changes in these devices uh, and how they're used day to day because of this shift to kind of smaller? It's very interesting, the uh, sort of two sides, it seems, of the, the hardware argument, which is one where you're going for performance and so you don't mind if it's a little bit thicker. And then the other side is like, let's make it as thin as we possibly can, as portable as we possibly can, as small. Uh, yep. Where does this kind of fit in that lineup? Uh, it, it's definitely the portability. Uh, portability is easy to sell, uh, you know, lighter, thinner, longer battery life, you know, that's, that's, that looks good in ad copy. Um, but it also, you know, those changes are big. They do deliver something to the consumer when you're talking about a product like the Surface Pro, um, you know, a, a, a lighter tablet is easier to carry and it's easier to use casually. Uh, it really makes the most of that form factor. Um, there might also be a cost play here because both of these products mm -hmm. are actually cheaper than last year's models by, you know, a hundred bucks or so. And, uh, you know, that's going to be a more important competitive advantage in the coming months. You know, we've got tariffs, we've got other pressures that are going to impact pricing on the PC market and how people, uh, how people select what they're going to buy. Um, and so I suspect there's, there's some of that going on as well is a slightly smaller form factor gets them both of those sides of things. Got it. Uh, so we talk about those advantages, battery life and energy efficiency, but you also talk about in your piece, some, you know, drawbacks perhaps to arm based PCs. Uh, what are some of the compatibility or performance issues that users, it seems, especially business users might run into? Yeah. I mean, Microsoft. I mean, to their credit, they've gone to great lengths to make this ARM concept work. Uh, and, and they're doing better at it now than they have in the last decade's worth of attempts. Um, you know, we've got more native apps, we've got more robust emulation, uh, but it's not going to work with everything. And compatibility with specific software is a big one, especially for businesses, because industry-specific apps that were built for x86 aren't always going to work, even with the improved prism emulator that they have so depending on your business that could be a deal breaker right away you know mm -hmm. because businesses are often relying on niche tools that don't get broad support they don't get frequent updates you know some of these are you know tools that are made for three companies to use and mm -hmm. uh you know and if it doesn't work and your company relies on it then it's just not going to work um peripheral support is kind of the other big issue uh printers in particular um, I mean, you need something that works out of the box with the equipment that you have. Uh, and with ARM, it's not always going to do that. But more than that, there aren't always solutions you can find. Um, so it, particularly for, for companies that, that have those specific needs, um, you've really got to check compatibility and peripheral support first uh, to make sure that it's going to do what you need it to do. As long as you don't have those issues, it's actually pretty great. I've been really surprised in the last year at, at how well the, the X64 approach is working with, with Microsoft's new support. Uh, I've been really impressed. And for consumers, it, it's almost, you, don't, you almost don't have to worry about the switch. But for businesses, it's a sticking point. Now, I did kind of notice a broader theme uh, in your piece about the competition in the chip market. Um, how does this shift towards Snapdragon perhaps reflect that changing dynamic between Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, uh, especially when we look at the chips that are being used in the AI PC category? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge opportunity right now for chip makers. Intel is still huge, uh, but they're not as solid as they once were. Uh, AMD is more competitive than ever, but Qualcomm really is the up and comer right now. And we're hearing rumblings about potentially stuff from NVIDIA and MediaTek and who knows what's coming down the pike. But AI really is the major tech development of this decade. I, I don't think there's any argument about that. Um, but it's one of the many, one of the many ways it's changing the tech space is that it's kind of reshuffling the deck for hardware manufacturers. Um, AI PCs are an inflection point because the NPU hardware and then the software that takes advantage of it 
that's a new area where Intel doesn't have a built-in advantage. And so, I mean, this the Surface products with Qualcomm is a great example of that, that it's, it's about supporting new experiences and new features that we haven't used before. And that, that really opens up a chance for any player that can deliver what they need. One thing that I really appreciated about the piece that you put together is there's a lot of analysis in it. And so I wanted to kind of ask you a stepping back question. Um, what are your thoughts on what this reveals about Microsoft's strategy in the AR hardware, AI, excuse me, hardware space overall? And do these new surface ta or surface, does this new surface hardware suggest the company is kind of doubling down now on a longer term bet? Yeah. So the Qualcomm partnership, like I mentioned earlier, this is a multi-year agreement. But for Microsoft, that's a short-term bet. Uh, the bigger play is making AI on the PC a Microsoft-branded domain uh, mm. with Copilot and Copilot Plus. You know, they want you to think Copilot every time you hear AI. Uh, and, but the biggest names in AI right now are companies like OpenAI and Anthropic and Google. That's all on the cloud. And that has been a huge threat to Microsoft's consumer business because it kind of leaves them in the cold. So they've cozied up to OpenAI, they've gone full bore on Copilot, and they're, they're planting seeds with things like this Qualcomm partnership to let them own or co-own major innovations for on-device AI. You know, the out at the edge in the devices people use, if they can own AI there, then it continues to be a major part that wins for them. Um, so I think that's the long-term play. Uh, obviously, you know, I don't, I don't have any secret sources or <laughs> magic eight ball here, but that's that's what I can see from from what we're looking at. Nice. I want to thank you so much, Brian, for taking the time to join us today on the show. Of course, folks can head over to pcmag.com to check out this article. We'll, of course, link it in the show notes. Um, but if people want to keep up with what you're doing, is there a good place they can go to uh, stay up to date with your articles and, uh, and sure. anything else you've got? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm on Twitter. I eventually need to change to something else, but I'm uh, Brian at PC. Uh, and, and I, you know, I tweet out most of my articles there. Uh, but, but really PC mag is the place to go because uh, we're publishing a lot these days. I do a lot of laptop reviews, but I also write a lot about AI. I've even got a, got a column about AI that, uh, that we'd love people to read called try AI. So check that out. Awesome. We will. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Fantastic. Thanks, Michael.